Uh, and just one last video to give you some help and some practice drawing uh, basically Lewis structures and then from that getting uh, geometry based on electron domains and then determining molecular geometry as a result. So for this uh, selenium tetrafluoride example, uh, you know, the first thing we need to start, right, we need to figure out how many valence electrons are we working with. So selenium will bring six electrons to the table. And then we've got four fluorines that'll bring each seven electrons, seven times four, 28 total electrons. So we need to place 34 uh, electrons around this molecule of selenium tetrafluoride. So we'll start with the uh, selenium in the middle, and then we're going to place uh, our four fluorines, and that'll use right two electrons in each bond. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We just used assigned eight electrons, so we should have 26 electrons remaining. Now let's fill our valence shell of uh, the fluorine. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. We just assigned 24 more electrons, so we should have two electrons remaining, and we can assign those to selenium as a lone pair of electrons. So with respect to our uh, electron domain geometry, we have five different domains. So we would be trigonal, bipyramidal, and with respect to our molecular, so this is for our electrons, and then for our molecular geometry, right, we're only going to look at what our actual chemical bonds. So we have, we'd have a seesaw geometry. And the last thing you should also know um, is you should know the hybridization. So we have, we need to have five different bonding interactions. So we need five different orbitals. So the hybridization for selenium, we should have sp3d hybrid orbitals. Uh, to give us those five orbitals we need. We're going to hybridize one s orbital, three p orbitals, and one d orbital. Mix those all together, uh, together to give us five orbitals that are sp3d hybrid each. Uh, we're going to do a similar process for the xenon tetrafluoride. Uh, we would see that xenon has eight valence electrons and then again we have four fluorines that'll bring seven valence electrons each. Uh, seven times four is 28. So we have a total of 36 electrons that we need to assign. We'll place the xenon in the middle and then we'll form uh, four bonds with our fluorines to assign right eight electrons, two electrons in each of the bonds. So we just used eight electrons. We'll, we'll have uh, 28 electrons remaining. So then we need to fill our, our valence shell for fluorine. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So we just used 24 more electrons. So now we only have four electrons remaining. Where can we place those electrons? Sure, we can put them on the xenon. So here's one, two, three, four. Now we've placed all four remaining electrons, zero electron remaining. So our uh, geometry with respect to our electron domain We should see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six domains. So we're going to be octahedral. And what's the hybridization of anything that needs six different electron domains? We need six orbitals. So we are going to be sp3d2. 
we're going to have to hybridize one s orbital, three p orbitals, and two d orbitals to give us a total of six hybrid orbitals. And then last but not least, our molecular geometry. We can look at and see, right, just the bonding uh, electrons we have. So it would be these four all along the equatorial axis to give us our uh, square planar shape. And so that's all we have to do to determine, you know, number one, how many valence electrons do we have to work with? Number two, what's the valence structure look like? Number three, uh, how many different electron domains do we have? And that gives us our electron domain geometry. From that, we can then find the hybridization. Um, and then last but not least, to find the molecular geometry, right, we're just looking at what are the bonding interactions for this molecule. So here's just two examples of, of how I would suggest working through uh, these types of problems for the selenium tetrafluoride and for the xen xenon tetrafluoride. And then the last thing to remember, right, you might think, you know, to do this, you broke the octet rule uh, because selenium has more than eight valence electrons and xenon has more than eight valence electrons. And just to remember that, right, anything phosphorus and beyond can break the octet rule because they have access, right, to the D, empty D orbitals that we can use to put these electrons in. So it's, it's okay to break the octet rule as long as the element has access to empty D orbitals.